what they did was early on, of course, they knew they were going to be hooked into the the country music scene. I mean, well, first of all, Waylon was in every show as the balladeer, and uh, after the first season and a half, his they shot him playing the guitar at the beginning of the show, so that that intro changed. So what they did was they set up a little mechanism in which, towards the end of the show, um, it wasn't necessarily connected at all to the story. Sometimes they were, but a lot of times they would a uh, uh, musical, uh, a country music star would get caught in Boss Hog's speed trap, so they'd have to play a, a show at the Boar's Nest as their penance, as their their sentence. Uh, when Loretta Lynn came in, uh, she had a terrible sore throat. Uh, it was the kind of sore throat that if, it, if an actor had had it, you wouldn't see him for two days. And, but she's in town, she's going to do a concert with this sore throat, and she's going to be on Dukes of Hazard, and so she comes in and she sings. And I just remember seeing that that's, that's a typical coal miner's daughter, I've come to work, and if I drop in my tracks, that's what I'm here to do. Roy Orbison sang Pretty Woman to me. I'll never forget that. He just looked at me through those big old glasses of his and he sang that song to me and he was so charming. He, he, he was my friend till the day he died and now I'm still friends with Barbara Orbison, his, his widow. He was just an amazing, fun, crazy person. Who's that Johnny Paycheck? Remember him? Johnny Paycheck was on our show, and remember he had that song, Take This Job and Shove It? He got paid in cash. <laughs> he was so funny. He got paid in cash and uh, wanted it all in $100 bills and got out of there. Uh, we had a blast. That was really, that was one of the high points, was uh, working with the different uh, country western stars. <laughs> The stunts on Dukes were in the hands of some very, very good people. Uh, and stunts always look terribly dangerous. The ideal stunt is to look dangerous and not be. Uh, of course, John did a lot of the driving stuff. Uh, we like to say we didn't do any of the jumps and the crashes, but we did get air now and then, and we did wreck a few cars, especially him. I was a better driver. I'm kidding. We had fight scenes. Every show had a fight scene. And we were very fortunate in that uh, both Bo and Luke, uh, these actors, could handle themselves. We could shoot the, the fight scenes up close because these guys were both very good. And they learned their craft uh, under Baxley's tutelage, and they learned how to do all of the fights. The stunt thing was always something I was uh, comfortable with, and also that uh, both of us, John and I, would get very excited about. <laughs> it was, you know, I, I tell people when we first started working on the show, it was like, it's like playing cowboys and Indians and getting paid a lot of money to do it. It was great. And this was the thing, if I would write a stunt and I would give it to Baxley to do, I knew two things were gonna happen. One, he'd make it twice as good as what I thought of. He'd come up with something else I hadn't thought of and when I saw it on film, it was gonna work the first time. And that's a professional. The, the stunt guys that we worked with primarily were the Baxley boys. Um, uh, Paul Baxley was our coordinator, and Gary, his nephew, played, doubled me in a lot of the stuff, and Craig, his son, doubled John. So we got to know them very well, and it was, it was a really nice relationship, and, and especially in this show, where there was a separate stunt unit that shot almost as much footage as the primary unit, you know? So we would, we would get, uh, we'd get pretty excited about it. We had a, a lot of fun. The stunts were always going to be a part of the show. We're going to be at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock or whenever we are. All of our violence is going to be on machinery. We're going to tear up cars every show. We're going to tear them up. And we average totaling five cars a show and one General Lee. That's one General Lee every episode. Every time you saw General Lee leave the ground, that car was totaled. The car came down the other side, that's another car. But sure as I'm sitting here, boss is gonna take this farm if you don't fight that catfish fella. Right Luke. now, just hold it, you two. The interesting thing about, about Dukes is if we, if we run into any of the other actors, 
uh, it's great. But also, by the same token, if we run into any of the stunt people, or if we run into any of the uh, uh, the grips, the gaffer, if we run into anybody that worked on Dukes, there's a a family feeling there that exists to this day, some 20-something years later. Everybody was a star on our show. Everybody was recognized for what they did, and, and everybody did their very best job. We all sort of started in the business together. When they got ready to leave, I, I remember sitting down with them, and I said, you're going to be on location, and you're going to be uh, have some stuff thrown at you, and you're going to be confused, and it's going to be hard, and you're going to have to rely on each other. And look to Denver. I remember saying, look to Denver. You got a question, go to him. And they did. And as a result, they bonded. And Denver kind of looked after them. And I, I don't mean in any, uh, uh, in any cliche way. He just looked after them. If they had a question, they would talk to each other. And so that family kind of thing between those three was, was held beautifully. That ain't the way you brought us up. No, it ain't. You said that the Duke should never turn their back on somebody who needed help fighting a system. Especially J.D. Hogg's system. I, uh, I said that. You said that. Yes, sir, you did. Well, all right. Uh, you go ahead and help Mr. Yarborough, but be careful, do you hear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Whether dysfunctional families, good families, uh, we, that they all stay in touch. And, that, and you said not just the three stars stay in touch. And that's what was different about Dukes of Hazard. In our seven years uh, shooting Dukes, uh, we kept the same crews and we kept the same stuntmen going. And as one of the cameramen came up and told me at, at the final show, he says, you've put a lot of kids through college. You put, he says, you put four of mine through. And so uh, this, of course, made us feel very good uh, because it was a big family kind of thing. Once you got on Dukes, you tried to stay on there, not just to stay employed, but there was just, there was that family feeling. Uh, you hear other shows say this. Uh, in this one, we weren't making it up. It really was. It was family. Fortunately for all of us, for John and Kathy and I, um, Denver and Jim Best and Sorrel Book and these guys were all tremendous uh, and tremendously experienced and very generous with their time. And if you asked them something, they would they would tell you what they thought. And they also didn't. It wasn't like they came on strong either in their advice. They they all seemed to have a tactful way of, of dealing with our inexperience. Which was, which was really fortunate for us. What I learned from Tom Wopat is uh, that you can, in fact, not only follow your dream, your life's dream, uh, but live it for however long he's been around. Tom has been doing musical theater and doing it exceptionally well. Um, I think all of his life. Tom is a he, he is just a freak with knowledge and trivia, and it's it's uh, daunting to be around that. Catherine Bach, I think the thing that I learned most from Catherine is that it's okay to be joyful in a public place. John is like my brother, and so to see Hollywood through a young man's eyes, which is what I I felt like I was doing was so interesting because, because every woman in the world was throwing themselves at John Schneider. I think the fondest memories I have are of the days when we would have big scenes with everybody in the cast. And uh, because the cast had such a genuine love for each other. And we felt we bonded together um, in a way that very few casts did. I learned from Denver Pyle that, uh, that it's extremely important to pay attention to business. Um, 
Great man, great actor, but his questions to me were always, are you happy? Uh, are you saving any money? Jimmy Best was the one of the premier acting teachers and, and acting coaches in Hollywood. From Jimmy Best, I learned that it is actually possible for an actor, not this one yet, <laughs> to, uh, to be serious when he asks the question of the director, which eye would you like the tear to come out of? Jimmy Best is that good. Sonny Schroyer. Just, I mean, he is the original actor. Like if his foot's supposed to hurt, he'll put rocks in his boot. He'll do anything to get the real feeling. I mean, he is the real thing. And uh, he is an acting lesson at all times. And we always appreciated that about him. Of course, he's very funny too. I think the one lesson that anyone who knew Sorrel Book would come away uh, from him with his diversity. Um, Sorrel was many, many things. Uh, before he was Boss Hogg, I don't think there was any of Boss Hogg and Sorrel. You know, Jimmy Best, Denver Pyle, and Sorrel Book were recognized, highly respected in Hollywood as great, not good, but great character actors. Just a good old boy, never meaning no harm. It's hard to pin down why exactly it was it was as successful, as successful, and why it continues to be. The longevity of the show obviously was because the fans, because fans keep you on the air. It had hit a very responsive chord on a lot of a lot of different levels. Uh, first, the kids liked it. Uh, kids in high school liked it. Uh, secondly, you can see the, some of the best stunts, and people like to watch stunts. Does he always drive like this? Well, no. Usually it's more radical than that. I think partly because it was one of a kind. I mean, there were other, there were other car shows at the time, but none of them with the same uh, recipe. Southern. Um, a little borderline tied to NASCAR, country music, um, family values. Part of it also was we did stay loyal to the basic premise, and people like to, to see that. I think those things contributed to our longevity. Back then when a hit was a hit, it was, you know, you'd get 40, 50 percent of the viewing population uh, watching shows. And that's kind of, it's just become a, a kind of a part of pop culture. So it's, it's really hard to pin down why, but you know, that's the fact of the matter. Hey, the show is nice you guys stopped by in Hazard again. No offense, but we were just passing through.